Hey guys, what's up? It's your good buddy Sam, and it's time for another exciting, well, not another tutorial per se, but an extension to yesterday's tutorial, a part two, if you will, um, of the pitch shifter. So yesterday I showed you how to build a basic variable delay line pitch shifter, and then had to stop because we ran out of time. Um, but all the cool stuff that you can do would have come right after that. Uh, so let's talk about some of the cool stuff. Um, first of all, if you recall, let's see, this is the delay line, um, here's the phaser that ramps between 0 and 1 and changes linearly the amount of time that sound's getting delayed, um, which is what actually shifts the pitch, and here is the um, window generator so that we can multiply our output sound by 0 whenever the phaser is going to have a discontinuity, and that way we get nice windowed sound without any clicks. Um, so that was the basic pitch shifter, and if you remember, um, one thing unfortunate about the windowing function was that it introduced kind of a warbling because it was modulating the amplitude of our sound. Um, and the output looks like this. So what we did is add another one of these, just another generator for that same sound. And we were able to, uh, that's not right. Uh, oh right, we had to shift this one um, out of phase by one half. And then we get, by adding those two cosines uh, functions together, we get a much flatter windowing function because each one of these is compensating for when the other one uh, is quiet. And if you, uh, you might think that you could get an even flatter windowing function uh, if you took this whole thing again, copied it, and then move this one one third out of phase and this one two thirds out of phase and add it all three together. And you actually do. You can get the more of these you add, the flatter and flatter your windowing function will get um, as each one adds in to compensate for when the others are quiet. Um, so this, of course, is not sustainable. Simply copy and pasting these all over the place. And so we're going to turn to our awesome, uh, our our difficult to understand but nonetheless helpful friend Polly Tilda. Um, so let's do that. Let's copy all these guts um, right here. Sound effects optional. Make a new thing here. Zoom in so that people can see it. Okay, paste. Uh, I can zoom in a little bit more. Okay, cool. Now, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and save this. This is a cool trick. If you save, I don't know if this is the only place you can save, but this is where I like to save. Um, if you save in applications uh, max5 max5 um, patches templates and then you can make a folder with your own stuff uh, anything you put in here will get loaded as an external and then it's like you've made your own object um, so I'm just gonna save this as SJT my initials dot um, let's see this is a pitch shifter with so I'll call it Doppler Shift, or just Doppler poly, Doppler poly tilde, dot max pat. Um, so now this is our poly object. And what we want is first to have an inlet for the uh, actual sound and an outlet for the actual sound out. Um, other things we want to have, we want to have uh, an inlet that's going to let us set the window size. So we'll make that the second inlet. And just for the hell of it, we'll, we'll make our window size um, a signal rather than a number. Um, okay, we also want to be able to drive. Remember, we had a, a global phaser so that all the um, individual pitch shifting units were in phase with the same, were, were um, slaves to the same phaser. So this is going to be the inlet for our um, phaser. Uh, we can switch those. It'll look more aesthetic. Sorry, so phaser's number two, and the actual, the window size, the maximum delay is uh, number three. And finally, oh, oh well. Finally, we need one more inlet, uh, make it in number four. And this is, uh, so what we want is we want each instance of one of these poly objects to be responsible for its own little slice of um, 
own little phase position. So the first one will handle zero degrees out of phase. The second, the, the second one will handle, you know, something over n degree, one over n degrees out of phase. The third will handle two over n degrees out of phase, um, and so on, up to the number that we wish to include. And this is where we set the total number. So, okay, here's what we're going to do. We need a this poly object that just um, load bang of this poly object whose job is to report the state of this poly one thing in particular that comes out here is the instance number of this particular poly object um, sub object whatever so this load bang will bang on this poly and then um, use a pack here so that whenever anything comes in here uh, or something comes out of here the output of this this pack will uh, trigger an output and that will go down to this divided by so what will come in here is the I think I have this backwards what will come in here is the total number of objects that we want total number of phase positions we want to work with and what comes out of here is the instance number of this particular poly you divide one by the other and then you get which uh, position and phase this poly object is responsible for so what comes out of this divided by we want to put that here because that's where um, we set the phase, if you remember. So let's go ahead and save that and then switch back to our other window. And now we can delete all this shit, because fuck that shit. And we'll make a poly tilde object sjt.doppler um, underscore poly tilde. And it loaded and it has all our inlets, so that means we did everything right. Um, so we'll bring this in here, and the sound out comes here. This phaser that drives it goes in here. Um, make a number tilde object, right click here to configure it for output, and then set it to 100 as the size of our um, delay window. Oh, and let's use um, two of these poly objects for now. You know what, just for the hell of it, let's, let's jump back here really quick, um, and let's make another outlet. Uh, Make another outlet here that's just going to show our windowing function. This will be handy. Uh, and then let's reload this. Let's start with two. Ugh. Sorry. <laughs> let's start with two. God, do as I say. All right, with two. Um, and what comes in here is, uh, oh, right, the total number of phase positions we want to talk about. So in this case, it's going to be. Um, In this case, it's going to be two. But what I want to do, we have to make sure that uh, we send this message to every instance of poly tilde. So we have the target zero message. I know this isn't going too fast, but um, oh well. Anyway, uh, trigger, bang, no, integer, bang. So the first thing that we'll do whenever something comes out of this integer box is bang on this target zero message, which configures the poly tilde so that um, anything we send to it goes to everybody and then send this integer into this inlet. Hopefully that makes sense. So in this case it's two, and if I start talking into this thing, la 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 la, you hear my voice much lower. We did it, and you don't hear that irritating uh, warbling that you would hear if there were only one window. Uh, and if we look at the uh, output, the window output here, sorry, we need to divide it by two to bring it back into range. Look at that, there's our window. Uh, but now what we can do is say bump the number of these poly things that we have going up to, I don't know, five. Say we want to deal with five phase positions, divide by five, and now look how flat that window is. So you gotta admit, I mean, that's pretty cool. Now we can have as many or as few of these things as our computer's processor can handle, up to, you know, a lot. So, okay, how much time do we have? Uh, ah, God, I... <laughs> All right, um, I guess we're out of time again. Got all this technical stuff, I just wanted to mess around. Um, okay, so let's leave off here. That'll be part two, I'll throw up a part three. Um, anyway, so that's how you can bring all this stuff into a poly tilde object, um, and we'll use that next time to mess around and actually do some cool stuff. Um, cool, thanks for watching, hope that was helpful, and I'll see you guys soon.